Hi everyone, it's Miss Bleakley. Today I'm going to read The Great Nursery Rhyme Disaster by David Conway. I hope you like it. Little Miss Muffet was bored. She was bored of being in the same old nursery rhyme and she'd had quite enough of that scary little spider. What I need, she told herself, is a change. So off she went into the pages of the book to find another nursery rhyme to be in. Along the way she met the grand old Duke of York. May I be in your rhyme? asked little Miss Muffet politely. Of course, said the Duke. Get in line. Oh, the grand old Duke of York, he had ten thousand men. He marched them and Miss Muffet up to the top of the hill and he marched them all down again. Oh no, complained Miss Muffet, that's far too much marching for my liking. And with that she toddled off into the pages of the book to find a better rhyme to be in. Soon after she saw Jack and Jill going up a hill. They were happy to let Miss Muffet try out their rhyme. Jack and Jill and Miss Muffet went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Miss Muffet fell down and broke her crown and Jack and Jill came tumbling after. This nursery rhyme is much too painful, cried little Miss Muffet, hobbling off to find a rhyme that didn't hurt so much. On the next page, Miss, little Miss Muffet spotted a mouse by an old grandfather clock. May I be in your rhyme, she asked. Marvellous, said the mouse. I'm tired of scurrying up and down that clock. Hickory dickory dock, Miss Muffet climbed up the clock. The clock struck one, Miss Muffet slid down. Hickory dickory dock. I look ridiculous, said little Miss Muffet as her cheeks turned almost purple with embarrassment. And with that, she sneaked off to find a rhyme that didn't make her look quite so silly. Further on, little Miss Muffet met Johnny Flynn and little Tommy Stout. The two boys giggled to each other as they let her try out their rhyme. Ding dong bell, Miss Muffet's in the well. Who put her in? Little Johnny Flynn. Who pulled her out? Little Tommy Stout. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. A very wet Miss Muffet screamed and ran to the next page of the book as fast as she could to find a rhyme that had no naughty boys in it. It wasn't long before Little Miss Muffet ran into a dish and a spoon. May I be in your rhyme? she asked. Yes, you can play the part of the dish, said the cow. Hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such fun and Miss Muffet ran away with the spoon. Splendid, said the cow. But the dish wasn't happy and a terrible rumpus broke out all over the page. I'll have you know that I've been running away with that spoon ever since this rhyme was written, screamed the dish. Oh dear. The rumpus spilled over onto the next page. Sing a song of sixpence, a pocket full of rye. Four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. When the pie was open, the birds began to sing. Oh, wasn't that a dainty dish to set before the king? And then the next. The queen of hearts, she made some tarts, all on a summer's day. The knave of hearts, he stole the tarts and took them clean away. And before you could say, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, the whole book of rhymes had thrown, was thrown into chaos. The Queen of Hearts wasn't making tarts anymore, but Incy Wincy Spider was. Mary didn't have a little lamb, but instead was followed by three blind mice. And it wasn't Humpty Dumpty falling off the wall, but old Mother Hubbard. While all this was going on, little Miss Muffet, who by now had decided that she no longer needed a change, tiptoed quietly back through the pages of the book and returned to her very own rhyme. But she soon remembered why she had ch wanted a change in the first place. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider who sat down beside her and frightened Miss Muffet away. Ah!
<laughs> Miss Bleakly doesn't like spiders. Good job I've got lots of Ashcraft's children to help out if we have one in the classroom. Night everyone, see you soon! <laughs> <laughs>